Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian Movie Enthusiast, and this is my review of Wolf Totem, a Chinese dramatic thriller from 2015. Now over the years, I have recommended a handful of thrillers from mainland China, mostly because it's you know not a subgenre that that industry is known for, but they do make some good flicks in this subgenre. Now on this channel, I have reviewed The Looming Storm, uh, Black Coal Thin Ice, Savage, No Man's Land, The Big Call, uh, Chongqing Hot Pot, Wild Goose Lake, Wrath of Silence, etc. And it has been a while since I've covered a film like this from the mainland. And Wolf Totem is definitely, it's like more of a drama than some of the, the films that I've mentioned before, which were more maybe thrillers. A lot of them are kind of dramatic thrillers. But this film does have some thriller elements that could be classified within this subgenre of Chinese cinema. So, let's talk about it. Set in 1967, a young Beijing student is sent to live among the nomadic horse, horsemen of Inner Mongolia for the purpose of helping out and teaching the kids Mandarin. So he's sent out there into the, you know, into the rural lands to kind of educate the people there. Okay? And they learn that the locals have waged war against the wild wolves who target their horses and sheep. So that's kind of your basic premise here. Okay? Now apparently... During the pre-production phase of this movie, the filmmakers selected three dozen wolf pups from zoos in China. And they, then they had a Scottish expert come in and train them over the course of four years. Now that's pretty insane for uh, you know uh, pre-production for a film. And they definitely took the making of this film pretty seriously and it shows when you watch it because it's pretty high quality stuff now at times wolf totem is i'd say almost like a documentary which is a good thing in this case because the, the use of animals in the film is very impressive and you know, we get to see them in their natural environments as well as their conflicts with neighboring human civilizations and i especially enjoy the emphasis in this film on maintaining like an ecological balance right like monitoring uh, the number of different animals in the surrounding area for maximum benefit. So, you know, helping to balance like the various predators and the prey is kind of an important plot element of Wolf Totem. And it drives the main conflict because, you know, some of the humans in this film make decisions that disrupt that natural ecology, which basically leads to an outright war with the wolves. And uh, our main exception to this is our main character, who's the guy who he decides to secretly raise a wolf pup in the human civilization and train it. And all this creates a very compelling drama. So you have this constant, like, it's basically all out war between the humans and the wolves. And then you have this one guy who finds a pup in the wilderness and raises it secretly. So, it's, things get pretty dicey here, right? Overall, this is a, a very high-quality film. Some memorable moments. There's a scene showing wolves, like, uh, hunting gazelles. That's really good. Like, when I was a kid, I remember watching, like, the Discovery Channel. And my favorite thing to watch would be, like, the cheetah versus the gazelles, right? And, like, it was, like, life or death. Like, either the gazelle gets away or it's done. Right, and you have a little bit of that in this film, which is pretty cool. There's a uh, there's a tunnel crawling scene involving humans that's pretty claustrophobic. There's a chase scene at night involving horses and like a snowstorm in the middle of the night. That scene's pretty cool. And then there's some you know beautiful natural environments and stuff like that. So you get kind of like a mix of documentary and fictional drama uh, in this film, which is pretty cool. Now. Looking back on this, I have a few slight criticisms. You know, there is a six-month time jump 
that occurs very early on in the film seems a little awkward. Threw me off a bit. And the runtime is a, a bit long at two full hours. But those are really like the main gripes I have with this. This movie, it's one of those movies that I could recommend to almost anyone. Really. I mean, the production has some very interesting facts behind it. Just reading the production of this film is ridiculous. Uh, For example, this was actually directed by a Frenchman, uh, Jean-Jacques Annaud, who previously directed Enemy at the Gates, which some of you may have seen. And his country of origin is not only the odd thing about this hiring. He was actually banned from China after directing seven years in Tibet back in 1997. So, you know, as you might expect, the reasoning for his ban was because, you know, Chinese censors disliked how he portrayed certain people or aspects. You know how it goes in China these days. They just, you know, they ban whatever. So it was pretty interesting that this director was hired for this movie after he was banned. So it's pretty, (laughs) it's pretty odd here. And in in addition to that, the source material for Wolf Totem, which was was a novel, was somehow allowed to be published by the censors in China, despite the fact that there was some controversial like commentary over uh, certain historical events and uh, organizations. So the whole like backstory of this movie is very odd. If a director who was previously banned who came back and directed it, which has happened before, but the source material that he decided to adapt was also controversial, but Chinese censors didn't seem to care. So uh, I found all of this quite interesting. So in any case, if, um, if the concept of this film interests you, I definitely recommend it. You know, if you're someone who enjoyed the Japanese movie Antarctica from the early 80s, uh, check this one out. Now, this is not quite as powerful as Antarctica was, but it has some of those elements in it. You, you get some of the animals and their natural environments, the interactions between them and the humans. This is a good quality flick. It really is. Currently available on Amazon Streaming and YouTube, as well as physical media. And as always... I will see you next time.